uh, um, nice and professional and the IPR guidelines and the IPR replies. You see it here. You have read it before. Next slide, please. Um, <clears throat> so this is the agenda for today. Um, uh, yeah, they are. I didn't have the final titles for the presentations. Uh, you, you will. You should probably copy from the. Um, I can update the uh, the in a moment. Um, the titles are different. Uh, uh, we also have Jana's short presentation, but she doesn't have a title. <laughs> no, SDF quality for round, round trips. Uh, actually, we should take that first. Ah, okay. I thought that was our... point five, but uh, then I was mistaken. Oh yeah. Okay. So so so, so let's take it in the sequence of of so let's take it in the sequence of the what's what's in the in the main slide set. So first there is uh, your Jana's uh, on SDF quality for round trips. Then there is uh, uh, and present stuff from uh, Karsten on attaching semantics. And then at the end there is a relationship to new assessments by Ari. Uh, I will update the. Um, uh, let, let's paste the right um, uh, agenda into the the final minutes. Uh, is there any additional? I guess, I guess that's okay with you, Karsten, to take your slides after Janos, or absolutely because mine essentially built on on hers. Yeah, good. Uh, uh, any other things people want to bring up today? Nope. Okay, moving on. Uh, work groups, next slide, please. Uh, next slide, please. Next slide, please. I need to move, I need to trim this down, I guess. So, uh, this is where we are today. Uh, we've had three virtual interims. This is the fourth one. We have had our ITF meetings at 109 and 110 with hackathons. We managed to publish the SDF 1.1 implementation draft. And uh, we've had some offline discussion or, or, or uh, so about meeting plans and going on. And I think the, the consensus was that we don't really need to have a meeting at IETF uh, 1.1.1. Uh, instead, we can make do with additional interims because people are busy at 1.1.1. Or many are, or uh, some people might take the opportunity to actually take vacation that week if they're not so busy. So um, uh, that's the plan. Uh, it, are there any very strong wishes for us to me meet virtually at one 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 or no? Great. If not, I guess we will we will plan for uh, interims. Uh, I think we can take that at the end of this meeting when we're done with our presentations or do it over email. Um, uh, one thing that we haven't brought up here is uh, if even if we're not meeting, I guess there is no point of having a hackathon in the week before. How do people view that? There was a question in the uh, W3C Web of Things meeting earlier about that, and I I kind of pro to sort of guess that we might have some of the workflow, um, or sorry, processing, SDF processing um, prototypes to work on, but I wasn't sure. So um, I think if, if, there, if there's anyone that wants to work on prototypes, now's the time to plan it, but I, I, I haven't heard of anything coming up. Mm -hmm. So, um, but that would be more on the one DM side, right? Or, well, um, yeah, you know, SDF processing in general, there should be a library of ways that you've resolved references and things like that. And there okay. are some other things, okay. that, you know, that, that sort of thing. So, one DM would use okay. it, but it would be sort of more attached to SDF. I think we decided that last mm -hmm. time we had a little discussion about it. Mm -hmm. 
Um, Those things that implement yeah, maybe, the features of the language itself and not one DM um, patterns. Yep. Yeah. Uh, are people open to doing that? I kind of have a bit of a problem that week to do things. So, so it's a, uh, it's I a might not be able to attend, but yeah. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah. When was that? It would be the meeting before. I mean, our, our usual hackathon week, I guess. Or is it the 20, 23rd? Oh, I don't know. I don't have the dates now. Would be the no, July it's, it's... 19th to 23rd? Yeah, yeah, that sounds right. That actually would work for me. Mm. I had a bit of a question mark that week. So, um, uh, what about others here? Well, let's see. I might be out of town, but I might actually still I would still be working. So. Uh, I'm not on vacation, so even though I'm out of town, I think it might still work for me because I'm in a different time zone. So depending on the timing, it could it could work for me. Mm. Sorry, close. Maybe are you were in the car, so maybe you can't talk. So yeah. I, let, let, let's make that a maybe. Um, I, I'm very much interested in working on the tools chains, but maybe not that week. Uh, but uh, let, let, let's see if we have some. Uh, I mean, that that's. But I mean, we also need to plan the interim. So it, it it could be that we bash our heads together and figure out because I what one thing which we haven't done. But we also need to discuss, is of course, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, what should I say, the final parts of this, um, of, of making SDF drop an RFC. And because I think we, we have sort of hand wave that that's, it will kind of happen, but I think we need to be more concrete now and what we need to do when we need to assign document shepherds and stuff. So <clears throat> there's a bit more work to be done to, to, um, uh to wrap this up um so i mean for the minutes let's um uh, let's let's agree that we don't meet at uh no objections to not meeting at 111 and a maybe on doing some kind of uh, sdf processing hackathon activities in the week before there and then we will sort that out over email Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, oops. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Don't scroll on your screen. Um, uh, any? Yeah. So uh, ASDF outreach. Uh, yeah, thank you. Move on to the next slide, please. Sorry, my, my previous meeting was rather intense, so I kind of burned all my brain cycles on that. Um, anyway, uh, ASDF outreach. Uh, and so far, beyond 1DM, I mean, we had presented this to the DMSC group in Thomas Beckworks, and there's a discussion there on how to use it, if to use it, and how to use it, and, and that is being discussed. Um, this um, ISO IEC JTC1 SE41 proposal, it, as far as I know, it was uh, it was approved in the vote with pretty actually pretty strong approval, uh, pushed back from Korea and Japan. But apart from that, strong approval. Uh, and now uh, Östen is cleaning up, and they had some kind of second round of of doing objections and handling those questions. I, I provided some input to them for that, uh, but uh, I don't know when that is done. But, but it seems like SDF is on anyway. Uh, Web of Things, uh, what more is oh. happening there? Web of Things, yeah. Um, with Web of Things, they're very interested in harmonizing the design patterns between SDF and uh, the 
the new thing model and the more uh, sort of offline formats where thing description, as you know, is more of a uh, instance describing hypermedia control. Now they're looking at more modeling. And so they have needs to do things like we do with references and, um, you know, other kinds of validation and all of that. So they're very interested in harmonizing with what we do. And um, I think it would be productive to to set up a, a meeting and, and have a joint session at some point. Um, mm -hmm. I think they, they've asked me to set that up and, and, uh, I think we should, we should consider doing that because they have a lot of similar questions and issues. In, in fact, almost every, everything that we we have is open issue. They are sort of considering, uh, some sort of feature and thing model that is going to require the same kind of uh, decision to be made. So we want to harmonize all of that. Plus. We want to make sure that at the, at the other level that our definitions are things that they can use in as annotations and thing descriptions, but that's, that's, uh, I think even secondary to like the, the basic design pattern. So that's something I don't have a, a time frame for that because they're, they're just finishing publishing their, their specs. So what we're looking at is the next version. So, um, until now, they've been sort of too busy to engage, but after the face to face, or maybe during their face to face, so they're having a face to face the same time as uh, ETF uh, 111, basically in the last couple of weeks of the of June. So uh, maybe during their face to face or shortly after. So that sort of late June, early July time frame for for engaging with them. Yep. We can plan that. Uh, I mean, that sounds good. I, yeah. I will be on vacation that time, that time, but, um, uh, but at some point, yes, I mean, I agree. We, we should definitely try to uh, work with them better. Uh, absolutely. Um, Does anyone have but, any but contact? Let's... Yes, sir. Would anyone have any contact with the China's um, AII, AIII, I think it's called, uh, Association of Industrial IoT or something like this? I don't know the acronym very well. Um, but since it doesn't ring any bell, I guess the answer is no. That, it, it, well, it does ring a bell because I think uh, that was... They are doing something similar to this, right? Or AIOTI, maybe? There was an AIOTI at some point, but I haven't heard. But much that's about EU. That. That's, that's different. Okay. No, but that is EU, so it's not China. <laughs> mm -hmm. IoT. It's 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 an uh, European ah, right, right. thing. Yeah. Uh, we, but had there, a, yeah, my... we had a presentation from the Think to Think Research Group to some Chinese IoT body a while ago. Of course. Uh, I forget the alphabet soup. Uh, yeah, yeah, the real problem is that I don't think they've actually consistently defined their English alphabet soup because it's pretty <laughs> much that's the thing part of what's hard to connect them well. Alliance of Industrial yeah. Internet, AII, and it's uh, um, looks like China. It's a government organization, 143 members by invitation only, mission to uh, uh, unite government industry, blah, blah. Yeah, right. So it's industrial <clears throat> internet yeah, for China, that's the one. basically their government org. Hmm. It yeah. could be the, the Chinese version of IIC. I'm not quite sure. But... It very much yeah. sounds like it. Yeah. 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 I think someone... But do you have any... Uh... Right. Yeah, yeah. Let me, let me give you a point. Yeah. I accidentally shut it down, but I'll get it back. Yeah. Okay, but uh, Michael Richardson, do you have, did you have any uh, thing in mind, or? Oh, there you are. Um, I I would say it's this a case of broken telephone, um, <laughs> where someone said asked me how what the relationship would be, and I like I never heard of them, and so I'm just spreading the. Uh, signal i think mm. i need to uh, th there was something like that being in the session where our iso is this in, in iso iec jtc1 where sdf proposal was proposed to pre presented there was something that sounds like this i will check on that 
but I mean, if if they have an interest of, of of learning more about us, I mean, we were happy to talk to them, I guess. At least figure out what it means or what they are about. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, one thing, maybe more to mention here that I forgot to add. Um, I guess we don't have any progress on the electronic data sheets or textile manufacturing. I haven't heard anything about those, so I guess there is. Not heard and back, but I I will um, I will do another outreach on the electronic data sheets. Yeah. Folks are busy, you know, doing releasing their own thing, and they should be done with that by now. So maybe maybe uh, maybe it's a good time. And then the textile people, I did reach out to them and didn't hear anything back, but I can send them another one. I'll just keep pinging them. Yeah. Okay. Well, one thing that was that should have been here as well, which is I mean outreach. Very close outreach. It was correct that there was a last core meeting. There was, a, I think we can bring it up in the notes. So there was a, a in the last core meeting. There was kind of looking at SDF and Coral and how they can be used together and so on. Uh, so um, there, if you were not attending that, uh, the notes are interesting in this aspect. I guess we should probably the most on. people on this call were. Yeah. Yes. Moving on. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so now we want to switch the agenda or. Wait, wait. <laughs> Sorry. So, uh, let's see here. Sorry. Uh, I realized that. Uh, uh, uh. Karsten, did you update, update this slide or. Actually, no. Um, <clears throat> Um, so th th there, there are two things that uh, I think we should be discussing. Um, first of all, there is a Dash 06 uh, out that uh, differs from Dash 05 essentially in resolving PR30. Um, so I think we had pretty uh, pretty good consensus on on how to resolve that, and the text is now there. And um, some text about multi-instance SDFs, SDF objects. So I think we, we had various discussions in, in various fora about how to do this and came up with uh, various candidate syntaxes. And uh, when I tried to write this up, I essentially uh, found that it's probably easiest to come up with the simplest uh, possible uh, syntax. So that that's uh, what Ari uh, proposed. And um, I actually sent a message to the mailing list uh, if, if you want to pull that up. Um, and uh, th there was a, a more complicated proposal that uh, I was making that I'm actually no longer really sure we need. Um, and Michael used that in his exploratory uh, uh, example. Um, so th that's maybe something that it would be good to get feedback for whether uh, Ari's uh, syntax is the one we can go forward uh, with. I mean, it's it's really simple. It's just adding the the min items and max items um, qualities to the STF object. Um, so. Um, yeah, we, we should check whether that handles the multi-instance cases uh, we have been uh, talking about. Mm -hmm. So feedback okay. on those hex, please. Yeah, I, I think everybody review the updated, ver updated draft. I realized it was sorted in the wrong mail folder by Outlook. Um, so I missed it, sorry about that. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. But that's good. I mean, I think that's that's good to have progress on that. And I, of course, if we can make things simple, so much the better. Um, great. Um, if there is no other progress here on the other um, uh, issues, I think we should go on with the presentations. And then if we have more time, dive into the ones here that we can discuss. Yeah, so my plan mm -hmm. would be to, to get the feedback on Dash 06 and uh, then uh, address some of the other 
uh, issues and uh, come up with a, a Dash 07 soon. Mm -hmm. And um, Ari's version of the multi instance with min items and max items is uh, in Dash 06? Yes. I think we had rough consensus on that, but I need to go back and see whether I think I had both versions and, and it was like, yeah, that'll work. <laughs> but I need to double check, but uh, I'll just review 06. Yeah. And so if, you, if you look at the, the email I wrote yesterday, shortly before midnight, um, that points to two uh, SDF documents in the exploratory uh, repository that show Ari's approach and, and um, what I think my comments led you to do on, on your approach. And uh, so Ari's approach validates, uh, yours doesn't. And uh, we should check whether we, we can agree with going for the very simple uh, change. Um, yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, so, so, sounds good. Okay. Uh, is, is, is my audio working now, by the way? Yeah, yes. sure. Go ahead. Okay, e e excellent. So, um, what, 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 one more comment here. Um, on, on the version discussion, I think it would be worthwhile maybe having a small design team meeting or something on, on that um, to really get back to all the things we have now learned and explored on the versioning and it's related to the uh, number 29 here, but then also the whole data model versioning discussion at large. So I had some good discussions with Klaus uh, over the last few weeks. Um, it would be interesting to go back to that topic, uh, but I can imagine that's something not everyone is interested. So we could have a, you know, be a design team site meeting on that. Sounds good. Yeah, plus one, I think that's a good idea. Um, should we try to have something around two weeks' time from now? Yeah, I think something like that would make sense. I will do a doodle for, we will do a doodle for, um, week 24, right? Yeah. Yep. Yes. Great. Yeah, thank you, Ari. That was a good point. Uh, it's good also not to bring that discussion up here further because I think it, it, it gets so messy. Um, yeah, with that then, I think we can move on to the to the presentations here today. Well, I just have uh, one, one uh, question. Yeah. Um, so mm -hmm. we are using this term SDF next or one dot next and so on. And I think we already noticed that we have different ideas of what that means. And uh, related question is, um, what is the, the set of things that we actually want to get done uh, before uh, we publish a version as an RFC? And I think we, we need to uh, renew this discussion because it, it, it is pretty clear that there are a number of things we, we want to do, uh, but it may not be the right approach to actually wait for, for all these things having been, been done uh, before we publish the, the first specification as an RFC. Very good point. And I, I think the... Uh, we can, of course, discuss it now. I, I must say that I haven't. Um, maybe, maybe it would actually, yeah. So I, I, I can't say that I, I, I personally had a, a sort of exact perfect vision of what that, what the RFC would be, and, and what is the way for. Because as we look on on things like the stuff that Ari is presenting at the end here on relationships and instances and so on, that is. Pretty cool stuff, uh, and and some of it might be in an RFC, and some of it is maybe future material, but still, I think we will continue to build on on stuff we can include. Um, uh, and the question is here: Do we can we have a, a time bounded discussion on that now without being people being prepared, or were you suggesting we could take it afterwards, or how do you? 
think we should run this. Well, since since many of us us actually have a vision for the timing of the the submitting the first RFC, um, maybe it's a good idea to exchange those visions. Yeah, I I, I agree. I totally agree, and I, I think there are there are many things here that also that we actually kind of, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so we can't really discuss this uh, now without uh, some preparation, uh, but maybe no. for for the next interim, that that would be one uh, uh, interesting question to to discuss. Yes, so I, I think. Yeah, so what I think would be good is that, I mean, like Karsten, if you, if, you, if you have it in your head, I mean, please, I mean, if you could write, sort of write up uh, as a kind of a feature list and a, a list for fe later features of sort of post RFC stuff uh, from your perspective and others can um, add to that or look at that or do their own lists. Uh, And yeah, I could do that, but uh, there's, it's not just features. We also have some some editorial work uh, to do. Uh, and yes. And yeah. Getting some implementations uh, uh, going and so on. So we shouldn't forget these other tasks. Uh, yes, and, so we need to identify uh, the document shepherd to and have a look at all the document quality. I, I don't, I mean, I'm not saying that there is a ton of quality issues, but we need to at least. Oh, actually, the, the, there are things that still need to be done. So I think yeah. that the to do list for the document is way larger uh, than the to do list for for what what we are discussing in in the working group meetings. Hmm. Um. But yes. Um, had had I had more time, I would have spent loved to spend some time on that before this meeting. But yes, um, let let's let's ponder this a bit. I think it's a very good thing, and I think we really need to settle that down uh, and then prepare material for next interim on on this how to what I mean how when do we conclude what is what is done. Uh, the exact objective, um, because also I guess if we want to do more things that go beyond our charter, I'm not saying that we are there already, but we were chartered to do the SDF spec, and if we want to do a lot of other things, it's it's of course we need to do that work as well. Um, mm -hmm. But let, let, let's let's take that. I mean, people go home to their 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 cabins and think about that and try to pull together material and, uh, as you say, both the quality assurance bit, but also the <clears throat> feature inclusion exclusion list. Uh, and then we can discuss that next time. Is that okay? Sounds good. Perfect. So, that said. And we also need to decide, as you said, what to call it after SDF next. Uh, next slide, please. They were a bit hastily put together here, so 12, four. So, uh, as we were preparing for this meeting, uh, Karsten reached out, and I, as I understand it, this is a uh, one of the issues that Jana found in, in the translation SDF to GAN. So, Jana, please, can you thank you for putting together some slides? Can you explain and tell us what the problem is and what you want to yeah, do about sure. it? Sure, thank you. Uh, yeah, hi, I'm Jana. Uh, I'm currently working on an SDF YAN converter as part of my master thesis, and I'm a student of Karsten, for those of you who don't know me. Um, yeah, YAN is a modeling language for data sent over network management protocols. For those of you who don't know. And uh, while working on my converter, I ran into another issue, uh, which is round trips this time. More precisely, without additional measure, measures, uh, models that are round tripped, which means uh, converted to SDF and then back to the original format, uh, will be completely different from the original that they came from. 
why is that? Um, the reason for that is that convergence uh, conversion does not work in an injective way, where one structure from language X, in my case Yang, uh, is converted to a distinct structure in SDF. Instead, uh, multiple structures from language X, in my case Yang, are converted to one structure in SDF. For example, um, Yang's choice structure and Yang's built-in type union would be converted to um, SDF choice. So uh, when you want to go back, when you want to do a round trip, it's not possible to know anymore um, where that SDF choice came from, whether uh, it should be translated back to Yang choice or to the type union. Um, yeah, so the solution would be a new SDF quality. Um, by the way, Carsten made me aware of the possibility to introduce a new SDF quality, so it's not uh, entirely my idea. And he also asked me to um, yeah, suggest how that could look like. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, and this is my suggestion. Um, by, the f by the way, the image is referring to the formal SDF syntax from Appendix A of the Internet Draft, uh, where I put in my extensions or um, the new origin uh, SDF quality. Um, the origin SDS, SDF quality would be added in the uh, SDF info and in the common qualities. Uh, common qualities are, I think, used by all of the uh, elements in the de definitions section. And the idea is that the origin statement in the SDF info specifies uh, the origin format by a uh, name and a reference to, for example, the RC of that format, uh, which are both text. And then uh, in the quali common qualities, um, there is the origin statement, which contains a named set of origin qualities. And origin qualities, in turn, um, include uh, the statement as text, for example, type or type def and optionally an argument. So for type, it might be union. Uh, yeah, and I'm going to show you an example for that on the next slide. Uh, this is what it could look like. Um, for the example, I constructed a dummy module. So this is not taken from any real Yang module. Uh, and this Yang module contains a definition of a derived type which is derived from uh, the union built-in type and is a union over the type string uh, and decimal 64. So an element of this example type def could either be of type string or type decimal 64. This is as of now translated to um, an SDF data definition, example type def containing uh, the SDF choice between the type string and the type number. And now if you were to go back without uh, any additional SDF origin quality, um, you wouldn't know whether this SDF choice was originally uh, a union or uh, a Yang choice. So this is where the origin quality steps in. Mm. In the info block, there is a, a reference to uh, the format name, which is Yang. and to the RC of Yang. Uh, this isn't really needed for my converter, but I thought it would be nice um, background information. And then in the SDF data element, there's an origin statement containing um, the set type def and type. Uh, and type def um, defines that the statement, a statement, one of the statements used was type def. And type defines uh, that another statement used was type, and that statement has the argument union. The um, type def statement does not have an argument. Uh, yeah. Since I already need this in uh, my converter as it is right now, uh, I implemented it uh, kind of temporarily via the uh, common quality description where I kind of added a code that indicates um, the statement and argument. 
but I basically did it in the same way as in this SDF quality where um, there's a statement and an argument defined. So um, the way I presented it here would already work for me, um, but it isn't really elegant to do it over descriptions. That's why uh, for my purposes, it would be really nice if there was like more elegant, um, so to speak, official way of representing origins. And yeah, to sum up, this would be a working solution for me uh, and I would be glad to hear what you think of my suggestion. I have a question? Yeah, sure. Um, so is there other uh, things other than Yang that would have this specific uh, union versus choice issue? And would they refer to it as union? I, I'm completely ignorant here, so. Uh, I'm not really, uh, well, fluent in any other formats, so I'm not really sure. But since union is not really an uncommon type, I would say that can happen in other uh, formats as well. Mostly I'm just concerned about the, the, the word union might be confusing some potentially in some other place that I have no clue about either. So that's all I'm asking about is whether this is the right uh, concept, the right, 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 the right, the right concept, but whether it's the right way to, to explain the, to the concept and maybe someone else has a better knowledge than me. Oh, well, yeah, not to my knowledge. Mm. Well, well, first, first of all, thanks for bringing this up. I think this is a, it's an important issue. I mean, I have a couple of questions about your your design here. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, would everything in the origin block be kind of, let's call it origin specific uh, vocabulary? So there would not be like um, name conflicts between different origins or how do you envision that to work? Um, so you mean that uh, what is defined via the statement and arguments has to be, you know, official or what do you mean? Um, I guess the, well, maybe when I'm thinking about the use case I have in mind, maybe that, that clarifies it. But let, let's say, for example, that, you know, um, my Ipsom models would have something similar. Um, could I have information from both Yang origin and Ipso origin in the same file. Ah, I get it. So you would have two origins. Yeah. I don't know if that would even be possible because uh, when, uh, at least when running my converter, you always uh, translate from one, from one file to another. So it would only be specific to that one original file. Mm -hmm. I think the, the interesting case is when, when uh, <coughs> we have a model from ecosystem A and <clears throat> that, that is um, converted into SDF and it has some of these, these origin qualities and uh, then somebody translates it into B, ecosystem B, for instance in Yang and uh, starts uh, working with it and, and making sure that we have the right unions and, and choices and whatever uh, in place and then translates this back into SDF, uh, then you probably would want to have the, the Ipso-specific data in there alongside the Yang-specific uh, data. So I think it's, that's not, not entirely um, unlikely that we will turn up with, with annotations of this kind uh, that come from different uh, ecosystems. And of course, in that no. case, we would have to make sure that we don't get name conflicts between them and so on. So we would have the usual work of, of coordinating namespaces and all that. Uh, now I get it. So if there was like a chain of um, well, conversions that happened before the conversion to SDF. Yeah. Or, or, not really a chain, more like a shuttle. Uh, so you, you 
you have two people working on a common model and one of them works in, in an Ipso model and the other one works in Yang and they collaborate through SDF and they just want to make sure that their models don't lose all of, of all of the information that is important for their modeling world each time they they go back to the other side. I actually uh, had the idea first to put inside the the um, the origin statement in the um, for the definition in the common qualities um, to put in each one uh, the format name and format reference so Yang and RC etc. Maybe if that would still happen, then that would solve that problem because it would add to each um, origin each origin quality, um, the, the format that it refers to. Yeah, let, let's not, not design the mechanism. I think that, that the namespacing mechanism we have in SDF actually might might be good enough to to handle this. Um, but I think in, in, in general, it uh, will be um, important to have this kind of uh, coordination and uh, uh, yeah, we also want to make sure that, that uh, a converter of ecosystem X doesn't mistake uh, statements that are made in, in the origin qualities of ecosystem Y as something that, that actually is, is from ecosystem X. So we have to have some namespace management here. And as soon as we have the namespace management, uh, I think it, it's just a very small step uh, to allow both. Now, of yeah. course, the question of what that means semantically will not always be easy. So uh, this shares requirements with uh, the general mapping and protocol binding yes. and what have you as well. And I think I had some yes. examples that I prepared where, where I tried to look at uh, having extension vocabularies that had specific um, origins already. One of them was the Web of Things. Um, or actually the the different vocabularies that are used for protocol bindings in the web of things, the HTTP vocabulary, the MQTT vocabulary, et cetera. So I, I think what, what we need to, you know, I think what Karsten said is, is uh, you know, plus one that, that, that our namespace mechanism probably can deal with conflicts, but what we need to do is to have a, a, a robust design for a common way of adding extension vocabularies or or if that's not exactly the right thing, something that accomplishes that those common requirements that we have. I think extension vocabularies make sense, but uh, there's another way to think of it in terms of mapping files. Well, maybe it's not a whole bunch different, really, mapping vocabularies. There's the idea of whether it's in the file or out of the file, and if we manage the conflict correctly, the processing wouldn't care whether it's in the file or a separate file with JSON pointer references. It would still work the same way. I think the, the important uh, point here is that these are annotations. So they are not changing the semantics of the SDF. They just make it simpler for the SDF to actually get translated uh, into an, an ecosystem. So they are really very close to the mapping file. Um, information, except that they provide a way to to store the information in the document in the SDF um, specification, in the SDF uh, model, as opposed to in a separate mapping file. I was thinking of it as a back mapping to you know in terms of a translation. So forward mapping would be to map into a, a target instance format, but the back back mapping would be to you know, to annotate based on the original definition format. And I've seen other uh, use cases where this would be a good thing. So I, I definitely would totally support this being one of the one of the things that we do with annotations. Also, definitely see it as annotations that don't change the semantics of the SDF file, but augment it and provide ways of integrating integration points for other uh, to make SDF integrate into other ecosystems more easily. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Jana, for, for putting this together. I think it was good to bring it up. And I, I agree with what people have been saying here that this is a feature that is definitely useful. And I think we, however, I think we should try to treat it as 
some kind of inline mapping file aspect, but um, Time check. Well, like like here, you could just say Yang type def, Yang type union, yeah. you know, and, and if you namespaced it, I mean, that's just like throwing some <laughs> word salad yeah. out there, but you know, that's, that's kind of the idea, I think. So we, we only have 10 more minutes, so maybe we should move, we will, not that maybe, we should move on. Um, what is the next step for this? Uh, we haven't defined the mapping file format or anything like that, because I think this should be uh, related to that. Will you work further on this, Jana, or are you done now from your perspective? Um, you mean on uh, developing a new quality or on the converter per se? No, I mean, on, on this, uh, will you, <laughs> you, you have sort of, um, I guess this solves your use case. Do you need anything more with this right now or? Well, as of right now, I'm uh, solving it via the uh, common quality description, so I'm fine. It would just be a more elegant solution, but I'm not really dependent yeah. on on it being there anytime soon. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Let's let put it on the list. This on the list of, of things that we need to look deeper into, um, uh, and then move on, because we have actually have a bunch of slides left and. Um, yeah. Yeah, so uh, thanks for your attention. Yeah. Thank you very much for presenting it. Uh, Karsten, you're, you're up next. Yeah, next slide, please. So this is essentially the, the, the related thing in, in uh, another color. Um, so um, I was asked to prepare something and uh, I remembered that I already, already had prepared that in 2018 for a T2TRG uh, meeting. Next slide. Um, so essentially the, the presentation at the time was about attaching semantics. So how do you attach uh, semantics uh, to um, an instance uh, you have? Um, and uh, I called this semantic style at the time because essentially we, we have learned ways of doing that using XPath and, and XSLT. Uh, and so on a long time ago, so we know how to do these uh, uh, things. And uh, maybe it's a good idea to, to just use that knowledge in, in um, designing this. So in, in the semantic style world, a style can be uh, uh, specialized for a single instance. So you essentially have resolved pointers that point to specific places in that instance or it can uh, apply to a class of instances. And then of course you need to find uh, what, what you actually want to influence with the additional uh, semantics using some, some selector uh, mechanism. Next slide. And when we uh, look at this from the SDF uh, perspective, well, first of all, SDF models are instances. So we can actually use JSON pointers um, as a selector syntax. Uh, so th this is all very simple. And I think some of the mapping file proposals essentially uh, do that. Uh, but um, of course, uh, in, in some cases, uh, selectors that actually apply uh, to multiple uh, models also would be uh, useful. So we could do something that actually provides a mapping file to all Ipso models and not just one uh, of them. So this is a very different instance versus class uh, discussion because SDF semantically, of course, are classes, but the models are instances of, of the meta model that allows those classes. So that, that's weirdness numbers one. Next slide. Um, what can we do? <clears throat> we can have transformations and augmentation. I think we, we already had half that discussion already on the previous uh, point. Um, so the, the attachment of styles may lead to a completely different document with, with a different target language, different target generic uh, data model, which was the idea in, in DISL and XSRT. <clears throat> or it may be more on the augmentation side. So you have uh, 
something like CSS, which uh, gives you properties in addition to the attributes that are already um, in uh, the uh, instance. And then we, of course, have in-model augmentation where we stay in the generic data model. So we could theoretically put all this information uh, in uh, the instance, which is essentially what, what uh, Jana was showing, or we can have uh, extra model augmentation where we essentially uh, put this into a more um, general data uh, uh, model, um, which uh, maybe is not, not that much different in difference uh, in practice. Next slide. Um, because in, in uh, SDF, um, essentially in-model augmentation would trigger existing extension points, uh, like using more qualities than, than we have defined so far. And extra model augmentation essentially creates new extension points, but the, these need to live within what we have in terms of extension points. So th that's not really that much uh, of a difference. And we just should make sure that in SDF we have ways to accommodate data uh, that uh, we didn't think about when when we uh, wrote the standard. Next slide. So um, in, in essence, what, what a, a semantic style is, it's, it's a pair of selectors with their effects. So in CSS, that, that would be uh, every HTML element with the class warning gets the color uh, red. And um, yeah, so, so how these selectors look like and how these effects look like, that's uh, essentially what we have to define. Next slide. And uh, yeah, so we if we only address sentence, uh, uh, instances, then uh, the adjacent pointer is all we need. So we could say that, that in the playground, the SDF type foo is augmented by, by some additional information. And uh, I, I didn't space, uh, specify the effect here, but the effect probably should be um, adding qualities. So this would be a little bit like the merge patch stuff that, that we already uh, did. So that, that's all I have prepared. And I think now I want to move quickly to Ari, who has another view on this. <laughs> okay. Th th thanks, Karsten. Yes, I think a slightly different angle, but I, I see a lot of commonalities on, on, on what, what you were presenting here. So the Background on, on, on our work is I've been discussing with uh, many of colleagues, uh, including Klaus, uh, on how could we extend SDF on to support more complex relationships and then also potentially have instance specific uh, information. And the background here is that we've been looking into converting SDF into different ecosystems like DDDL, OPC, UA. Uh, and also uh, looking into modeling some slightly more complex things that we have been using SDF so far. So if you go to next slide, there you have um, in, it's a bit of explanation of what we mean by this uh, relation relationship. So as you know, today the models, they can only have quite simple child parent relationships or composition by having uh, access to the properties group into SDF objects, SDF objects group into SDF things, which can be further group into further SDF things. However, many of the ecosystems we've been looking at, for example, OPC and DDDL, they do have support for more complex, basically arbitrary relationships or, or references, how they're called in those ecosystems. And as I mentioned, this is more common in where more complex systems than just a single device is, are described. And there you see an example how it looks, for example, in, in, in DDDL. So they also use JSON with, with a couple of um, name, name value pairs. You can indicate that, okay, this is a, a relationship called floor and the target is as specific another model. So if you go to the next slide, um, what we would be suggesting here is to add a, a, a similar feature to SDF to support that kind of uh, modeling. It could be, for example, called SDF relations. And the kind of style that we have been converging towards is to have this uh, a map of relationships uh, from any of the object or things that is uh, the source of those relations. 
and then you have a set of named maps there. For example, here you have a, a relationship called contained in. Uh, it would always have a, a target, which would be one, for example, one of the definitions in, uh, in the other SDF files or in the same SDF file. And you'd also have a, a type uh, if it uh, has a, a formal type, for example, from an external ontology, like the version Saref here as an example. And you could also have properties, so further uh, giving giving more information about this specific uh, relationship. And if you go to the next slide, there you see the same thing. Uh, in, in full context. Um, so if you go to switch to the next slide, there you see an example uh, STF object called room sensor that would have a, at least one property, but then it would also have relationship uh, to this STF object room that it would be this uh, sensor would be part of uh, using the SAREF vocabulary. So that's roughly the design where we had so far. Um, if you go on the next slide, um, we're also exploring or you're using occasionally a shorthand uh, design where if you only have the type and target or just the name and target, you could simplify the design a little and just have um, key value pairs where the type or name is the key and the and the target is, is, the, is the value. But then you, you miss the capability of, of putting properties and, and, and more details. So maybe pause briefly here before we go to the instance. Um, Type is really rel and right, and and properties is really target attributes. If you use some of the language we used we used to use to describe type links of the hyperlink type, mm -hmm. indeed. So it would even maybe maybe make sense to use rel instead of type, and maybe you maybe make sense to use target attributes instead of anyway. <laughs> we could argue about the semantics, mm -hmm. yep. but uh, the yep. pattern makes sense. The relation simplified pattern here without the target attributes would be more limited, but um, it's not clear what it optimizes. The the other one would yep. would be like a superset. Yeah. Indeed. Uh, so maybe quick general we're question. Yeah, we, oh, we are out of time, really. Can people stay for 10 um, more minutes? Sorry for the bad time management on my side. Yes. There are no objections. Yeah, keep going. All right. Okay, <laughs> thanks. So, indeed, maybe it makes sense to flip to the previous slide to show the <clears throat> uh, more, um, more capable definition. But, yeah, I mean, my good point, I think, is especially since the point of SDF as, as a format is to be friendly for developers and multiple ecosystems using terminology that is used in other ecosystems um, sounds like a very good idea. I think this one is using the terminology of DDDL uh, format, but we maybe we should explore a bit what, what the other ecosystems are using and then agree DT, on it. D DTDL does a funny thing where they could actually just have used JSON <laughs> JSON of LD typed links, but they actually model typed links using JSON LD constructs. So it's an interesting layer they add. I don't think we need to do that with our thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Um, and any other reflections on on this idea in, in general of adding? relations and and i guess we'll, we'll, we'll be still uh pressure testing the exact details of the format so but if the yeah, concept would, is sound I, we could go forward i was going to say i'm i'm very interested in uh saref integration as well and looking at sort of how how that would work and so i might have some examples that that test this uh in the next week or so so i think it would be really useful to to when you use terms like relation and type and so on, um, to always make clear on, on what level of the meta model we are at the moment. So is this a relation between the the class that this uh, SDF type actually generates? Or is this a relation that needs to be defined for every instance? 
very, very, very good point. And actually, now I realize that this specific example actually mix, mixes the two because I copied this from another place. <laughs> so maybe the, if you go to previous slide, uh, Michael, then the, the, I guess that example is, is, is better. It only uses the, <clears throat> let's say, class level uh, things. But, but indeed, um, whether that means that the target on the instance level can be only of that class. Well, that's interesting because if you look at SARAF, they've they've done the discipline of having separate relation types for those things that refer to SARAF classes versus those things that refer to SARAF uh, types that are defined within those classes, the application types. They they have different relations that you use for instances versus classes. But that, you know, I guess there's some question about that. Good point. Good. Okay, but I guess what, what I'm hearing, and no one is against like this general uh, idea. Uh, so we are definitely gonna need more pressure testing when, and seeing how different how it works with different ecosystems on the uh, types and names of the of the qualities, and then this instance versus class uh, aspects would, would need to be clarified. Okay. B very good. Um, then maybe we move to the STF instances. Um, so this is uh, a <clears throat> related, but a, but a, a different topic. So here, also we're <laughs> proposing an inequality for for a different reason. So we've been so far mostly working on on, on a class level and, and modeling, converting classes from between different ecosystems. But of course, when you do use these classes in any live system, you also need to add instance specific information. To be actually telling more details about that specific instance of, of a class you are creating. Uh, so, for example, if you create the Web of Things thing description or, or Coral documents from STF models, you would need this information. Or if you're provisioning devices from different ecosystems that have spe specific features or already set for those specific devices, would be useful to be able to tell about this instance information. And uh, we did discuss in the core interim, as, as Niklas mentioned, uh, this SDF uh, into Coral. And there you can see more examples of, of, of how we're using this STF instance keyword. One disclaimer, this feature is, is let's say, less thought through and, and refined than, than the uh, relationships idea. But here, for example, one way how it could look like. Um, so if you're creating an, an instance called room one, it could, that is instance of uh, STF object room from this um, API namespace, that will create you an instance. And then you could, for example, set specific uh, properties to specific values uh, for, for that instance. So I had done a similar thing just by declaring an SDF thing and using SDF ref and the sort of structure we already have using the, the uh, uh, JSON merge patch semantics to do something similar. How, is this different? Um, Good question. I, I should probably have a, have a look at and probably the semantics might be slightly different. Uh, well, what, what I was doing was using SDF thing to declare instances. And that's that's mm. the thing that's different uh. from what we originally may have thought SDF thing was mm. only used to declare classes that contained other classes or whatever. Yeah. But I thought, well, why not, why not use the SDF thing to also declare instances? And that's what I did for the uh, the plug fest and the protocol binding experiment and all of that. And it seemed to, you know, it didn't, I mean, it, it seemed to make sense, but um, this is an interesting, this is really the same pattern then it's just using mm -hmm. some, uh, some additional semantics that are more clear about it being an instance. Yeah. Yeah, so maybe but it really uh, it still overwrites. Does that mean that if you have room, okay, let me see. If you have a definition for object room, then that all all that already has a room name defined, and what you're doing is just setting the value of that property. So room name is already defined in room, right? Yeah. Okay. Right. So it is is this very similar pattern, and then you're using const. Yeah. Right. Okay. Great. Mm -hmm. And then of course the the other class of information that we may or may not want to have here is things like, you know, what is the IP address of that specific device? Because that's also information that you would need to create, for example, a thing description. Oh, 
So here, and then also one, one consideration here is that like how far do this domain should we e e even go? Because we do have, you know, ways to express those instances, like, like for example, thing description. And we shouldn't be reinventing uh, thing description uh, just for the sake of it. Because the key question is like if you would go from different ecosystems, is there some piece of information that would be useful to be in SDF that it goes, makes it easier to go either thing description Coral document, you know, like with MPM stack. What what are all of these that would need that that those information uh, that should be available in in the SDF file to be able to go between any of these ecosystems? Well, there are some differences in what you were describing. That things description and Coral are both unique in that they contain addresses. The other formats don't. So what you're talking about is really model to model versus model to instance. When I did the prototype of model to instance with um, basically the what I was just describing an SDF thing that had some uh, some um, you know these uh, instance de definitions in it, like nailing down the values of things and all of that, I also used the SDF extension point. Going back to you know this is the example I was talking about earlier on the extension point. I used the extension point to add literal syntax from the description to the um, SDF extension. Now, I added two things, data schemas, and then the, the forms, the protocol binding part. And in doing that, I made it really easy to create a thing description. So I did not see that at all as reinventing thing description. I saw that as creating a very simple way of augmenting an SDF instance to be able to create instances of thing description in thing description format. So all you have mm. to do is fill out the, the, the bits of thing description that you fill out when you're making a thing description. So you, the tool chain could work either way. I, uh, the, this, this, this insertion of the thing description syntax into the SDF, SDF instance could be ephemeral in your tool chain. It could just be something you do in memory and you spit out the thing description. But I found it really interesting to make an extension point for SDF that had that syntax in it to illustrate the process and then also to make it sort of super easy to just wrap up a thing description. And we use the tool that you're the in the intern made um, or, or the, the whatever <laughs> I'm sorry you um, I forget who made that tool now but it was a, a tool that basically just oh, somebody uh, Sebastian uh, from uh, from from um, Siemens um, but basically that was how that worked and I saw that as being super useful and also um, you know if you wanted to have other instance formats that that do have addresses and things like that you could define extension points with those vocabularies uh, that that makes it easier to translate to those. So uh, just food for thought. So generally um, every instance can be described by a class that has cardinality one. Um, so of course you can use something like SDF to describe instances. Uh, the, the problem really is that the point of classes is to to provide rules for the instances. So who's who's providing the meta model for the instance attributes that you add to to the class? And I think that that's really where going too far with SDF as an instance description uh, will start to hurt. Well, another way to think about that would be I made a a mapping file that had a bunch of JSON pointers, and each of these JSON pointers had some W3C thing description syntax in it that was a hint for how you generated the thing description from that SDF. I mean, still, of course, it's an SDF instance, but the the uh, the um, the the information that makes it an instance is separate and it could be separate in a mapping file. It doesn't have to be in those extension points. The other things, you know, the schemas and all of that. The other things that you do might be to nail down the constraints of values and that could also be in the separate mapping file. So I don't, I don't really see it as being uh, 
having an, an instance needing to really have an instance format for SDF, it's more like how you would incorporate a mapping file in line. But um, you are mapping, you would be mapping to an instance uh, as opposed to yeah, just so, mapping so to another class, in, right? In, in that case, the question really would be uh, how does a class for a mapping file look like? That's essentially the question I just. Put. Yes, that's exactly, exactly. Yep. That is that. That was the question, and I just did some hack thing, but I think that's really what that's where the design starts. Yeah, and it might just be wrappers. Me. It might just be mostly wrappers, but it might also be a little more uh, integrated. We had that. I think we had a little. We just barely started that discussion. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's a lot, lot of commonalities on the on the topic of like um, map instances, ecosystem specific uh, features, and and what, what Jana was presenting with the origins. And I wonder how much common capabilities can can we build uh, that would be serving uh, all all of those cases well. Um, well, annotation seems to be a common theme in in all of those that it's annotation based on certain entry points in the SDF file. The selector, the selector pattern. And I think the idea of having something like JSON path or XPath style expressions might be a way to broaden the selector, but it might not really, it might not be every, everything we need. <laughs> But that basic pattern of selector and and effector, I think, is is I think, if we built that, I think it would probably be infrastructure for doing all these other things. Hmm. And to me, to me, it sounds so, like we should probably implement some of this and and see how it looks like. But yeah, absolutely. But I think we should also perhaps grow up the kind of, what you say, what should the requirements be for this instance of... Uh, well, I was addressing I like think we might, question. Oh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but because we might open a bit of a can of worms when it comes to mm. what are the expectations of an instance of things and, and so on. So maybe being clear on what we mean by an SDF instance, but then that might not be a fully fledged runtime something. It's actually more of a intermediate instance before the end i mean and I, I, don't, I don't know uh i think that would be good to have clear uh, since we are a bit branching out from the even if i think i mean this is valuable stuff so it's not not, not that but we got so well, yeah I, I, exactly i make instances of things that is everything but the address right so i make an instance of a thing that might be a backnet controller that has everything defined and all grouped and all the different affordances and all the different constraints and numeric bounds and, and all of that, but it doesn't have the address and all it really needs is the address. So it's not really an instance. It's a, it's very much an instance if you think about where you started with a set of SDF models, but it's not an instance if you're thinking about a network. It's not, doesn't have an address yet. So you that's the template from which you make maybe 50 of these in a building or something. And, and that each of those is an instance in your, in your you know runtime system so uh, yeah what do you call an instance is is probably an interesting question and i was just really more addressing karsten's question of what is the, the what is the semantics of a, a mapping to sdf in general what's the class of you know what are the classes involved in in that and, and i think if we could we could start with that and and maybe avoid having to say exactly what's an instance <laughs> But they're separate questions, I think. I'm afraid we're pretty much, well, far over time. We even spent almost 20 minutes. Uh, I think this discussion is something we need to have. Uh, I wonder if we should try to have squeeze in another interim in the not too far future, like three weeks from now or so. Uh, would people be up for that or? Yes, please. Yes, yes. Michael Richardson? Yep. 
So let, let's sort of save the context of this I'm discussion fine. and bring it up without the, the uh, kind of uh, boilerplate meeting stuff next time. <laughs> let's get into this because I think this, this, this is good stuff that we should have. Um, great. Um, I don't. I didn't want to kill the discussion. It's more that we. I think we are out of time, and people are chasing me here on the, on my side. That I need to end. Um, so I could quickly summarize. We could prototype this uh, selector effect uh, sort of pattern. Uh, uh, not so much as a hard prototype, but to test these three use cases against that pattern to see if it meets those requirements. And that could be something we do between now and the next meeting. That sounds like a brilliant idea. Uh, yeah. I'll try to wrap that up and send it out. Yeah, please, please do, please do. I, I um, uh, yeah, please do. So now I saw that Klaus wrote something on the chat here. Yeah. There should be bigger bells and stuff. You know, when, when people write things on chat because you usually miss it. Yeah. Good points there, I guess. Yeah. But um, should we try to schedule the interim three weeks from now, uh, Wednesday on the 23rd? Um, to follow up on this. Yeah, if we um, manage to avoid hitting the call and the COSI meetings, yes. Um, that's maybe more interesting. We might hit a Web of Things meeting. Hmm. Can you miss that, Michael? The face to face in that week. Oh, I, I yeah, I, I think I think I'll be okay. Yeah, uh, um, I'm afraid. I'm so my outlook is not perfect in showing different calendars for some reason. Um, I don't see any core meeting that week on the twenty third. But then on the other hand, so there's a there's a core meeting at ten, and a cosi meeting at eleven thirty, or sixteen. 1530. Yes. Mm -hmm. So why don't you declare this a design team meeting on this topic? Um, I, was like a I know Karsten still has a conflict, but, um, you know, why don't you, just, I don't know, whatever, I have meetings back to back the whole time. So, yeah. So yes, that that might be a good idea. Should we should we try to run a design team meeting, pull together a design team meeting in that week, and maybe that's easier for people to fit it to people's calendar. Um, well, this doesn't require such formalism. That's all. T two G has a meeting happen. on Monday. It says. Where are all the ITF meetings? Uh, I have I a calendar sync problem here, obviously. Um, yeah. So let, let, let's try to fit in a meeting that week, week 25. Uh, and you don't have to. Because after that, I'm on vacation. So it has to be that week. Yes. Um, you just take us with you. <laughs> I'm not going very far, I'm afraid. Oh. Um, <laughs> so water skiing and lap to the park. beach, but um, <laughs> oh, well. no, actually not. Our house, but it's not very far from here. No international traveling. Um. So, Karsten, you can you can't make it on Wednesday. Um. Well, the morning is wide open. Morning on Wednesday? Yeah, actually, same just, here. Just joking. No, I, I'm the only one who, well, Michael Coster, I guess. So put it early enough so that it's the night before for him. 
Got nine stand-up. hours to play with here, right? I have this daily stand up now, but it's it doesn't matter if I miss once once in a while. So it's it's actually it gives me a little more flexibility. But what time zone is that? I don't know. Oh, Pacific, um, eight to nine, eight to nine thirty, basically in that whole this exact range. <laughs> so you have to stand for ninety minutes. Oh no, there are three three fifteen minute ones because I'm on I'm I'm literally I'm 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 a virtual member of a bunch of different teams. <laughs> oh my god. That's the only way they can they have to make it work with agile. They still are stuck on having to have the agile, so this is like the hoops I have to jump through to, to do agile. Also have, you know, tickets and everything else they have to do. <laughs> anyway, that's just me complaining. Okay, so are we done? I don't think we managed to set the time, but uh, that's what Doodle is good done. for. Yes, let let's do it for something that week. Great, design time meeting. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. I'm um, really apologies for messing up the time planning here. Uh, and uh, let's see. Uh, let's speak again in a couple of weeks' time. Three weeks' time, to be exact. Great. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Great. Thank bye. you. Bye bye.